so I can sneak up behind him as long as he doesn't see me. As soon as he sees me, then he will open fire. Oh! Don't get shot again. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Before we get into the video, just a massive shout out and thank you to my wonderful Patreon supporters, James Welch, Selwyn, Basic Terror, Foozle CC, and Clone13. Thanks you guys so much for supporting my game dev journey. I really do appreciate the support. I hope you're enjoying the Patreon benefits. And as always, if you've got suggestions about things that you'd like me to make or make available to my Patreons, then please just leave a comment or just message me on Patreon. Okay guys, welcome back to Orion's Throne. I've added a few little bits and bobs. Don't get any of those things. Something bad might happen. Firstly, you'll notice there are guards that we can kill. They patrol and they have line of sight so I can sneak up behind him. Oh, but if he sees me, it is on. There's another one hiding. So I can sneak up behind him as long as he doesn't see me. As soon as he sees me, then he will open fire. Oh, don't get shot again. There we go. I've neutralized the threat. Something else I've added. The coffee machine is now interactable. So I can buy myself a cup of the strongest coffee in the galaxy. Oh, I can't afford it. But I could buy it if I wanted to. The pause menu situation's fixed. I can now pause the game in level two. And when I unpause, it keeps me in level 2. Also, on the pause menu, I've started to update the journal. When you go to the journal, it'll say your story so far, and it'll say Priya boarded the space prison in search of the prisoner. That is by no means the final text. That's just what I've put in. Uh, Pete, the writer, may have other ideas. As soon as he sends them over, I will update it. But what will effectively happen is when you complete level 1, the story will just continue in terms of text and it will just add on to this paragraph and it will start building a little story that you can start to read as you progress the game. You can see Cowboy is available in the pause menu now. I've started to add a few little secrets. Again, these are unlockable things. At the moment, they're just kind of um, monochromatic placeholders that will be in color when you unlock them and it will give you a kind of little hint as to what they might be if you just kind of look at the kind of thumbnail there. Um, but there's more of these. There's going to be two full lines that you'll be able to unlock throughout the game. Um, I just need to add them in as we go. If we go back into the other room, guards stay dead, as they should, because, you know, why should they come back to life? I think there's another one up here. There is! Oh, jeez. I better be careful. Oh, no. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Uh, this little thing here. So. In some of these little holes there's going to be eyeballs uh, and some of them will be traps. What I've done is I've created a sprite that animates and comes out as a uh, couple of tentacles that will grab you if you get too close. Um, effectively we're, what, what we might start doing is linking this into um, some kind of mini boss uh, that you'll end up having to fight at some point. So these little kind of clues that there's something lurking behind the walls and in the dungeons of the, the space prison that you'll eventually kind of come into contact with. But you'll you'll meet it and you'll be like, oh, okay, I get the, uh, the fact that these tentacle things are coming out now. So back on level one, I've moved this guy. Um, he's now in here. Um, I just think he looks better in here. Like, it's, like this room is more of a secret room and I, I feel like if you were kind of snooping around in there and he saw you, he may have something to say. So he says stay away from these terminals, but if he's up here, he's not gonna see what we're up to when we're down here. That's just my personal preference. So we've um, we've been in touch with Norma from Twitter, um, who has been providing some voice clips for Priya. Um, there's a few more now that's been added. Well, that's gonna need updating. <clears throat> I mean, we think they're funny. Um, you know, if you get caught now by the laser beams. It's a health and safety. <laughs> Indeed, it is. Hey, Woody. Hey, Mighty Jaw. And then there's a another line here. If we were to go and get some coffee. Glorious caffeine. So 
little things like that. I'm not going to give them all away um, because I want there to be some surprises, but I think it adds a little bit of flavor to the level. It adds a little bit of kind of, um, I don't know, polish in some respect, but it, it, it adds to the whole immersive experience. There's going to be loads of these little lines all dotted around throughout the game um, just for kind of humor and just context and just for prompts as well, like, you know, saying when she's at the terminal looking for the password, it says, mm, looks like it requires a password just for ease, I think, to help the player out when, uh, when they get stuck. It's a health and nightmare. <laughs> There's also a second line that she can say. It's a health and safety nightmare. Come on, Priya, say the other one. Well, that's just bad space station. <laughs> and they, uh, they are chosen at random. Um, it's, it's really quite basic stuff. I've got obviously more than one guard in that level. So I've just set up some events that say if the guard collides with a collision uh, box, which is basically a yellow, a yellow sprite, if I take you back to the level here, I've got them dotted around. So these four here are relevant to this guard. These two are relevant to this guard. These two, for example. Um, and I've given these yellow boxes instance variables. So you can see over on the left here, this one's one, this one's two, this one's three, and this one's four. Um, the guard is the guard. I've given him some instance variables that tell, tell me what state he's in, uh, either patrol, um, attack, or dead. And I've given him a direction variable and three HP. And the way that works is that if the guard collides with a yellow square and that's, that square's ID is one, then I set his directional variable to say down. If it's two, then I set it to right, three is up and four is left. Um, and they're dotted around in a square formation so that when he hits one, he goes down, when he hits two, he goes right, um, etc. I've given all the guards line of sight. So I've said if they have line of sight to the cowboy and their state is not currently damaged, uh, being damaged or, or shot at, or if they're not dead, then they will pick the nearest guard sprite to the cowboy because the way I've designed the level is these guys are all dotted out uh, and that's gonna be the structure for this level. So I don't need it any more complicated than that. So if we're closest to this one, then this is the one we're gonna be dealing with. So whichever one we're nearest to, I disable the tile movement because what I've done is I've given these guards, if you look at their behaviors, <clears throat> For their movement, I've given them the tile movement rather than move to or pathfinding because I want them to move around in a grid style in a, in a, in a kind of set path. So I've disabled that um, tile movement and I've just set their state to attack. And then once they've seen me, because their line of sight by default is 180, which means they can only see in front of them. They can't see behind them. But as soon as they do clock me, I've changed their line of sight to 360. So they're always aware of the direction that I'm facing so they can turn and fire at me. Then I've said, if they don't have line of sight to me, then we enable the tile movement behavior and we set their, their state back to patrol. Um, again, that's only if they're not damaged or dead, and then I set their line, line of sight back to 180. So if they're not aware of me, they're just going to march around in their little kind of path that I've set them. And if they are aware of me, they're going to look at me and find me and just shoot at me. And then I've set some groups up here to control these states. So every tick, if we're in patrol state and we're not dead um, and we're not being shot at, then if the direction variable is set to left, then we simulate the left tile movement. And again, remember, we set the direction left up here when we collide with these collision uh, boxes. So if we're colliding with one that has an ID of four, then we're going to set the direction to left. So if that is the case, then we every tick, so every frame of the game, we simulate the left movement on the tile movement behavior. Same for down, same for right, same for up, and I mirror them, not mirror them, whatever they may be. Um, and I've set their animation accordingly based on the direction they're facing. And then if we're attacking, so if the state does turn to attack, if state is attack and we're not being shot at and we're not dead, then what we do is we set the animation to guard one, which is effectively attack. And then I've set some variables here that determine where the player is in relation to the guard. So if the guard is left of the player, but not too high or too low, then he'll face left. But as soon as he crosses those boundaries, the guard will face up. So it's like he's looking at us no matter which direction we're going to be in. And then if that is the case, every one second, we simply just spawn in a bullet and shoot it directly at wherever the player is at that time. And let me show you the animations on the 
guard. We've got guard, which is effectively the shoot, and you can see that I've added highlights in here. So I've added white um, with some slightly alpha um, color on it. So it's not uh, a full block of white, it's just kind of faded. So it's like he's kind of recoiling with his shot. Um, that's I've called it guard one because I only had one of an, uh, animation initially. It really should be attack, but I can't be bothered to change it. Um, and then his walking state, which is pretty much the same as the one when you interact with him in the graffiti scene. And then walking up, very simply just four frames with his arms moving by the side. Walking down is the same, but with his little mask on. Shoot down is the same, but he's just got his gun facing at you. And again, I've added the white as a, a kind of a muzzle flash, if you like. Um, I probably will add in a sprite that spawns in every time he shoots, just for added polish at some point. Again, shoot up's the same. And then damage, if he gets shot, he flashes white for two frames. And then he goes back but he slightly leans back when he gets shot, so it's like he's taken a hit. And then when he's dying, he's simply just falling over. So all I've done is I've just moved his head position slightly and then flashed him on and off white until he's just unconscious on the floor. And that's basically how I've made the guards work. Pretty simple stuff, but that's all it needs to be. Now the idea is it's gonna get progressively more difficult as the game progresses with more and more complicated fight scenes that you have to kind of worry about multiple different attacks at the same time. But for this first little stage, this is absolutely fine. It just introduces a new enemy type to the player so they can get used to killing a few on their own with no real threats all around. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. And as always, if you found the video entertaining or if you wanna see me continue making more of these videos on this game, then please consider leaving a like and hitting the subscribe button. It really does help the channel. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video.